In this video we're going to have a look at images and how images are represented using data. Okay, We already know, or you should at least already know, that uh, data in a computer is represented with zeros and ones. So all data in computer um, is eventually, if you go down to the absolute most basic level, is a series of zeros and ones. Because these zeros and ones are represented by switches uh, which are either in the on or off position. Okay, that's the absolute fundamental of computers. However, eventually, if we want a working computer that does things, we have to somehow transfer those zeros and ones into something more meaningful, like, for example, this picture. This is a picture I took earlier. It is made up of tiny, tiny little pixels. Okay, pixels is a shortened ver um, version of picture element, and they look like this. If I take this little area of the picture here and we zoom into it, we get this bit here. You might be able to see already that this is slightly what we call pixelated. Pixelated is just a pedestrian term for something that where you can see the pixels that are on it. If we go even closer than this, we can see that it looks like this. This part of the picture, like all of the parts of the picture, are represented by tiny little squares. Each square has a single colour in it. However, when we make an entire picture with lots and lots of these squares, like this, you can't see each individual square, and therefore it's kind of like tricking your eye into not recognising the individual squares in the picture. However, if we go even further into this, you can see that each one of these squares for example, this one here is just a flat colour. The number of pixels in an image is called its resolution. We will come on to resolution a little bit more later on. Firstly, I just want to have a look at what makes up each of these pixels. So as we said, every single digital item on our computer has to be represented using zeros and ones, and pictures are no exception. This image here is represented by millions and millions and millions of lines of zeros and ones. If you were to look at this picture in its entirety, in its machine code form, it wouldn't make any sense at all. But actually you could decipher it down to its individual pixel level by understanding how data represents each individual pixel. This is what you need to understand for the iGCSE and it's what you need to understand for every other GCSE I've seen is how data is used to represent this pixel and therefore repeated throughout all of an image to represent an entire picture. So let's take a look at this pixel. This pixel here is this one right here. I've just blown it up so we can see that it's an individual colour. Every single picture or every single pixel as part of a picture in a computer image is represented using an amount of R, an amount of G, and an amount of B. RGB is the colour scheme that computers use. The R stands for red, the G stands for green, and the B stands for blue. All we do is we use a number of zeros and ones to represent how much red we want in a pixel, how much green we want in a pixel, and how much blue we want in a pixel. And those zeros and ones, we just repeat them millions of times for each individual pixel. And then when the computer receives that information, it uses the number in the R, the number in the G, and the number in the B to reform the pixel when we open the file and give us the picture as it's represented. So this pixel here has 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 4 zeros, and a 1 of red. This represents the number 33. It has a level of 33 red. Okay? If this was all 1s, then it would mean that it has the maximum amount of red. If this was all zeros, it would mean it has the minimum amount of red. This has less than half the amount of red it could possibly have. It has 33. Okay, that's a 32 and that's a 1. If you're wondering how I know this, I will show you in a minute. Um, I figured this out earlier using the colour picker and using a HTML chart, but I will show you later on. The amount of green, I'm just going to come down here for the green so we can fit it on, is 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 
zero. Okay, so here we've got 32 plus 8 plus 4. So we've got 44 green. And the amount of blue that we've got is 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. So we've got 32 plus 2, we've got 34 blue. So we've got mostly green with a bit of red and a bit of blue. By looking at that pixel, you would probably be able to understand that we do have more green with a little bit of blue. You might not be able to see any red in it, but there is some red in it. So this data here is how the computer represents this individual pixel. This number here for red, this number here for green, this number here for blue, and that combined creates this pixel. If I go back over to the place that I got this pixel from, which is the W3Schools um, RGB chart, you can see that here we can change the amounts that we have here and we can see this change here. The reason I'm showing you this is that RGB is what we call an additive color scheme. That means that the more color we add in to it, the more white it gets. It's different from when you're painting on a piece of paper. If you're painting on a piece of paper, then if you don't add anything, it's white. If you add everything, absolutely every color you could possibly get, eventually it will be black. It's the opposite with RGB. The best way to think about it is like your computer monitor. If you turn your computer monitor off, then it will be black. If you were to put your brightness up to the maximum amount, not that it would allow you to put it up that high, but if you could, it will be white. If we move, we can see here we've got 255, 255 and 255. This isn't a random number, this is significant. Because the maximum number we can make with 8 bits is 255. The 8-bit amount is significant because over here, this here is a JPEG image. JPEG images use 8 bits per colour. So they use 8 bits for red, 8 bits for green and 8 bits for blue. Before we move on to that, that's a little bit more complicated. Before we go on to that, I just want to have a quick look at resolution. So, I've got this picture here to represent re how resolution works. Resolution, we can calculate the resolution of an image by taking the number of pixels along one side and the number of pixels along another side and multiplying them. This image here is 10, oops, uh, 10 by 10. There are 10 pixels that way, there are 10 pixels that way. If we multiply that together, then this image has 100 pixels. Okay, so the resolution is 10 by 10 and the number of pixels is 100. This image here that we looked at before, this whole image here is 4032, let me write it over here, is 4032. Okay by, and that is the number going across here, okay, so this here is 4032, and this down here, I can't fit 4032 on the top or bottom, so I'll just write it there, this down here is 3024, okay, <coughs> and so the total number of pixels in here, if we multiply that together, is 12,192,768. This was taken on full resolution on a Samsung Galaxy S7, which has a 12 megapixel camera, and therefore we have 12 million pixels around about in there. The reason that isn't exactly 12 million is because we're using uh, what we call kibibytes and mebibytes rather than the rounded off version. So these are always multiples of eight because each one each we're using bytes and we're not using rounded off numbers okay so the resolution is the number of pixels on the top and the number of pixels on the bottom and to find uh, sorry the number of pixels across the top and the number well the side and the, uh, the length the length and the width whatever um, and the total number of pixels you can get by multiplying that is the simple mathematical formula for area so with that information we can start to work out how big an image is in its file size.
Firstly, let's have a look at what we looked at earlier, which was the number which represented the red, green and blue. In a JPEG image, which is what this is, we have eight bits for red, we have eight bits for green, and we have eight bits for blue. The number of bits we have representing each pixel, so in this case, which is 8, 16, 24, is called its color depth. Color depth is the amount of bits that can be represent the amount of colors, sorry, that can be represented in each pixel represented in bits. To make a good example, let's have a look at this one here. So the color depth of this image could be represented with a one bit okay, color depth. So the color depth of this image could be one bit. It might not be, it might just be that we've chosen to use this and this, but actually we've got many other uh, variations. Uh, but we can represent this image using one bit per pixel. Right, we figure that out by, we can see that we've got red, uh, sorry, we've got white and black here. Therefore, we've got two colors. Each bit, remember, can either be in a zero or a one position like a switch, 0 and 1. Therefore, one bit color depth can represent two possible colors. This one here would be the white, uh, the black, okay? And this one here would be the white, because as we talked about earlier, with RGB, which is an additive color scheme, the white is maximum, the black is nothing. So, what about if we were to have, let's go on to our color depth one to explain this. If you were trying to figure out how many colors you could represent using a certain color depth, let's say that we give our computer two bits per pixel to play around with. Okay, so it can only use two possible bits. Your computer, when we're creating this image, would only possibly be able to make um, use the following colors. It would be able to create one, two, three, four colors. Because we could either have zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. So when we're talking about color depth, it's the maximum possible combination of different colors that we can create using the amount of bits represented by the pixel. So if we were to have four bit color depth, we would have, we could have that, we could have that we could have and carrying on all the way down until we end up with our white pixel. The calculation for this is if you're trying to figure out the number of colors from a color depth, let's say we've got a four, a two bit color depth, okay? The calculation is two to the power of two. We've got a four bit color depth, the calculation is two to the power of four. If we've got a 16 bit color depth, two, oops. Uh, it's 2 to the power of 16. This constant here is because it's using binary and we've got two possible states. This bit here is our exponent, okay, and that is the what we call the, the bit depth of the color, okay. So back here in this example, and with all JPEGs, we've got 8, 16, 24, so we've got 20, a line of 24 zeros and ones to represent this pixel. A third of it used for red, a third of it used for green, and a third of it used for blue. If we were to do the calculation for that, it would be, let me just rub all this out. So the calculation for JPEG, if we've got a 24 bit color depth, is two to the power of 24, okay? So if I was to put a line of zeros 24 zeros, line of 23 zeros, then a one, and it's all those possible combinations. And the amount of combinations in that are 16.7 million. Because if we go to, uh, well, Google's a nice little calculator. If you put two to the power of uh, 24, which I've already done earlier, we got 
16.8 million okay if we're taking just the first decimal place there we've got 16.7 million which is usually how it's written so using a JPEG then you can represent 16.7 million colors within the total image using this information and the stuff we've already learned about resolution we can figure out how big the image is you need to be very careful when you're looking at file size though because when we're looking at file size we're not looking we can't figure out how big a JPEG will be the reason is that a JPEG uses lossy compression lossy compression means that it takes out some of the data that isn't that important so that we can save on file size but if you're trying to figure out what the uncompressed image size would be the formula that we need to use to work out image size remember this is uncompressed image this isn't a JPEG is resolution times color depth or bit depth so I'm going to call it color depth so let's say I hadn't compressed this image into a JPEG and I taken it in uncompressed form on my camera okay what that means is it's not it's exactly a raw image as the camera took it it's not gone through any compression then the calculation that I need to do is I know that my uncompressed form I used 24 bits okay so the number on this side here would be 24 the number on this side will be the size of the image so we've got 4032 by 3024 okay so the total size of my image would be if I do all of that calculation there this number here so the number of pixels in my image are 12 million as we said before 192,768 and I multiply that by 24 because each pixel is represented by 24 bits which gives me a total file size uncompressed of 292,626,432 bits okay however that's not very useful for us because we it's a massive number and we can easily round it down or we can easily sorry um, reduce it by putting it into bytes so if I divide that by 8 to get it into bytes then the uncompressed file size for my image is 36 million five hundred and seventy eight three hundred and four bytes you might in an exam get a further mark then for reducing it further into a more appropriate size which I guess would be 36.6 rounding it off megabytes let me just take that off because I've used it small which would be megabits megabytes okay so the uncompressed image will be 36.6 megabytes so remember just to go over what we've done let me go back to this first slide so your image is your image is made up of pixels which are tiny little dots if you figure out the dot the number of dots across the top and multiply by the number of dots down the side or the squares for the pixels you will get the resolution of the image okay you'll get the number of pixels inside the image if you then multiply that by the color depth you will get the size of the uncompressed file the color depth is the number of bits which are used to represent each individual pixel in all computers we use or at least all computers that you'll be using in your house we use the RGB color scheme red green blue in JPEGs we use 24 bit color depth which means that we have 8 bits dedicated to red 8 bits dedicated to green 8 bits dedicated to blue but if you use the um, if you use the calculation or the formula that we've got here with the JPEG then it won't work because JPEGs use lossy compression but this gives us the uncompressed file size